with our Pro Marker blending sets. Now I want to show you, I did three sewing machines here and I used um, the Pastel, the Muted, and the Vivid. Now I'm going to just zoom in for a close-up here. With the pastel, I used the two tans and I used the clear blender. I also used some pink on the um, thread. You can see how you can get a nice subtle blend with that. I colored these very quickly, so um, they're not perfect. Here with the muted set, I used the two browns that came in it, and I also used the pink, so you can see the color range between the, the pastel and the muted set. On the Vivid set, I used the browns. They were cinnamon and, um, ooh, I can't remember the name of the other one. I'll get back to you on that one. But you can see the nice blend I got there. Now that light stripe here, that was done just by coloring it over with a clear blender. You'll see when you use clear blender over the darker colors, it almost acts like an eraser. When you use it with the lighter colors, you can get more, more of a blend. So there are the three sets, and I'm going to show you how to use them today. Also, these tapes I did with the yellows in the kits. The first one here was done with the muted, I'm sorry, with the pastel, the second one with the muted, and the third one with the vivid. So these are some really great sets to play with, and I'm going to show you how to color with them today. Okay, today we're going to use the brand new blending sets from Promarker. Um, we have muted, we have vivid, and we have pastel. And I'm going to show you something really nice about these sets. They come in reusable clamshell packaging, and they're arranged in rainbow order. And uh, here on the label, I actually taped it into my case so I didn't lose it. It shows me the colors that I have and the nice blends you can achieve. In addition to the 12 colors you get in every set, they come with a clear blender, so you get 13 markers in all. And the clear blender can be used as an eraser or as a blending tool. I like to use it as an eraser with my dark colors and as a blender or a third color with my lighter colors. So today, we're going to color the sewing machine, and I'm going to use my two greens here, because I really like the two greens in the muted set. They're very vintage. And I'm going to use some of the colors from the pastel and the vivid set. But I'm going to set those aside right now, so I can get started with the sewing machine. Okay. I'm going to start with my darker green, and this is called soft green. And I like to start with my darks, and I go in and simply start coloring in my shadows. Little circles will give you a nice blend, but you can color a little bit quicker than that. If you really want to fill in a lot of color at once, you can use the broad side of your marker, and I'll show you how to do that. You have a little less control, but with a, like a nice rectangle here, that big area, I can go in with this chisel edge, and I can quickly lay in my color. I am working on Nina Solo White Classic Crest Cardstock. Don't be afraid to turn around your image while you're coloring it so you can get right in there the way you want. That's going to blend itself right out. This cardstock is really nice for blending. I'm going to go back in with my fine tip though and add my little shadows around. If you do make a mistake and you go outside the lines, use your clear blending pen to color right up to the line from the outside and that will blend it right in. It's a really uh, neat little tool. The thing I really like about these new Pro Marker blending sets is that the colors are um, they're well selected. They're almost um, a little more fashionable than like your typical markers. If you had a set of markers from the office supply store you could use them with these because these colors are just a little bit off the primaries. They're not super, super bold. They're very fashionable and very trendy. And um, it gives you that up-to-the-minute look with your cards. I like it because a lot of them have kind of vintage hues to them, too. And the vintage colors never go out of style. Okay, so there I've quickly thrown in some shadows. And then I'm going to go with them as my lighter color. Now these two colors are the greens. You see them right there on your kit. They are next to each other in the package. I try to put them back in order. And I'm coloring right over the dark, right into my white, and that's going to help me blend. The markers have alcohol as their base, and it will resolvent the already laid down color that you put a few minutes ago. I try to stay to the wet edge, meaning I don't color a little here and then over there. I try to just keep on going so that I get fewer streaks. And circles, going in circles will help you get fewer streaks. Now since this is a really big area, I could go ahead and use my chisel end. 
But if you're going to do this, you're going to want to move a little quicker, and you're going to want to make sure that you are really getting in there and blending. If this makes you uncomfortable, stick to the small end. It's not like you're going to, you know, use up all the ink. The ink will just flow to whatever end you're using. I store my markers lying flat so that the um, both ends will always be perfectly inked. That's a good idea no matter what kind of marker you use. I know some people say it doesn't matter. I mean, I'm sure it doesn't matter that much, but I just like to make sure my markers are ready to go when I am. Even if you keep them in little tins, you can always just set the tins on their side, and that will uh, that'll keep them ready to use, and you can tip them up when you're ready to color with them. If it doesn't seem to be blending very well, just keep on going over it with circles, and it will uh, solvent it and make it nice and blendy. I am going to skip around here just a little bit, because I want to go back in with my wire end. I'm just coloring over everything I colored before, and that's going to help me get a nice blend. Don't be afraid to turn your um, <clears throat> picture around as you color. As you can see on the first part of the video, I like to fill up a page when I um, when I print off my images. These sewing machines are from the So Much Fun set from Lindsay Stamp Stuff. It is a digital stamp set, which is nice because when you use these markers on an inkjet printout, they don't smear your ink. And that's one of the best reasons to use a solvent-based marker, in addition to the fact that they are just so fun to blend with. Now, if I want a little highlight on here, I'll just simply go in with my clear and color right where I want the highlight, and that's going to kind of erase and push the color out a little bit. A little bit here. It looks really nice on the lighter colors, like in the muted set here, because you're not just leaving white spaces afterwards. You're just softening it a little bit. Um, if you make a mistake here, I can see, I don't know if you can see that on camera, but I got out of the lines a little bit. So I'm simply going to go in here with my clear and push that ink back where it belongs. It just works like magic. When it dries, you won't see that there was any inky boo-boo there. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just add some light color here. I'm picturing the light coming from overhead, so this part of the sewing machine being lit up a little bit more. Alright, now that's really all you need to do for the sewing machine itself. You could go and, you know, futz around a little bit and add a little more highlight, a little more shadow. Like you could go back in with your darker green if you decided that this should have a little bit more shadow. You can just kind of throw it in there. It'll blend itself out a little bit. So you can really, you get a lot of drama even, even though you're just using a couple colors just by going back in and adding a little bit more. Now, there's no grays in these kits, but that's easy because if you know your color wheel, you know that you can mix opposite colors to make grays. So what I'm going to do to make the gray on the um, little plate here, the bottom plate where the um, feed dogs are and the little lever that rises up the uh, presser foot, I'm going to use brown and blue, and I'm going to use the ones for my pastel set. And since I want blue to kind of be the dominant, I'm going to first color down the little tan from my pastel. I am using the darker of the brown, and it's called tan. And I'm just going to go in and color all these areas I want to be gray. Although I have to say, I like this tan and that mint green together. Those are very pretty. So anything I want gray, I'm first going to color with the brown. Since these are transparent, when the light passes through the blue and the brown, it's going to mix and make kind of a gray. So, and you can really mix your colors. It's what's so neat about these markers. I'm going to go in with this blue. And look at that. It's making some nice gray. If you do blue first and then brown, you still need to go over it with a little blue. But if you start off with a brown, you can usually just go over it once with blue and be all set. There you, and always, if you're worried that it's not going to come out right, test it on a scrap of paper. And I think I want a little light pink, so I'm going to use the pink in my pastel set. And then I'm going to start with my darks. I find I have a better blend if I start with darks and then go to lights. Right on the edges there. Blend it with my pink there. 
And then for a highlight, which will be very subtle because it's a uh, very light color, I'm just going to color over it with my white to erase the ink there. Hope you can see that on camera. I'll have still pictures of these cards that I make um, on my blog so you can zoom right in and take a nice close peek if you want. I'm going to use some pretty vanilla, which is the yellow tint in the pastel set on my spool. Oh, you know what? I think I want to add a little bit of the uh, pink to this thread just to bring it out a little bit. And um, if I want to lighten up that spool, I could use this other color, the other yellow, which is called satin. It's just a nice um, cream color. And there, look how easy that was. To do the measuring tape, I think I prefer the colors in muted to do the measuring tape. The ones in Vivid are pretty too, but I want to keep my colors kind of all in the same family here. So I'm going to go ahead and, oh, let's do a three color blend. Let's blend um, between a couple steps because I think that will be pretty. I'm going to start with my lighter brown from Muted. I want to suggest you keep your stuff in your trays instead of spreading them across your table and forgetting what sets to go to. But that's why I taped my uh, little chart inside so I can read and see exactly what color is supposed to go where when I'm all done and I've left a big mess. First thing I'm going to do is go in with my tan. Oh, here is a fun trick. I'm going to cut this out, so I don't need to be careful now, do I? I can just go right in with this broad marker and go like that because I'm going to cut it out and no one's going to know that I'm a big slob. Then I'm going to go in with my um, brighter tulip yellow. I love this color, actually. I have purchased this uh, as a single as well. And look how quick we can do this because we're not worried about staying in the line. Work it to a blend. You can add a little more brown later if you want to. There. Then I'm going to go in with my lighter uh, buttercup. The nice thing about these sets is you can always buy individuals if you use one up. You can go to, online or to your local art store if they carry pro markers and just buy the single marker that you need. Or if you decide you really love that color and you'd like to be able to refill it, you could upgrade to a Tria marker and um, buy the refill inks for that. And I think I want a little more tan in there because it's a little too light. Since this is really wet, I can just go in and just kind of trace around the edges with my tan and it will just blend out on its own. Now I need a gray for the end of this measuring tape. So what are we going to do? That's right, we are going to mix our brown and our uh, blue. So let's see if I probably want to go back to the pastel set for that. I probably still have that marker out at I don't think I put it away. All right, let's go with our dark blue. Again, we can be kind of slobby here. I think I told you to do brown first, didn't I? Look, I'm not following my own advice. Going with my brown. Now my brain takes a vacation as soon as the camera goes on, I think. Let's go over that a little blue. Nice little gray here. Now, if I want to add a highlight, I simply take my clear marker and uh, I'll use the fine tip and I will just kind of make a L shape here, upside down L shape, and I'll work it back and forth until I have it as light as I want it. There, I'm going to zoom in so you can see that. There you go.